Hi, I'm Robin Greenler, and I am the Assistant Director at the Center for the Integration of Research, Teaching, and Learning, otherwise known as CERTL. I'm located at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I'm Noah Green, President of Green Scientific and Educational Consulting. I'm happy to be here with Robin today as we talk about failures and how to use failure as a way to unlock our potential for success. So before we jump into talking about resilience, let's step back and take a few moments to consider the concept of failure. There's a lot of research, consideration, and reconsideration of the role of failure in achievement. And I think it's safe to say that a lot of us carry a fair amount of emotions surrounding failure. That's right, Robin. And with that in mind, there are three points that we want to emphasize regarding failure. The first is that the negativity around failure is largely a social construct and is wrapped up in how we perceive or feel others perceive our failures. The second thing is that it's often the fear of failure and not the failure itself that can impact our performance the most. Finally, we want to explore how failure can be used as a powerful part of our growth process so that when we encounter those inevitable failures, we can demonstrate resilience and move through them. The famous writer and poet Maya Angelou did a great job putting failure into perspective when she said, there is no failure as long as you learn from your experience, continue to work, and continue to press on for success. So at its simplest, failure can be defined as not achieving an outcome. Just that. Culturally, we associate it with loads of negativity. And it's this tendency to see failure as inherently bad that can be more of a problem than the failure itself. In this module, we will discuss how we can alter our attitudes around failure to realize that failure is not actually or necessarily only a negative, but it might also be an opportunity to improve. So let's be clear about a few things. Everybody fails. Many failures are partial. Many can lead to partial or dramatic successes. This is not to say that failure is enjoyable, but as long as you're going to encounter failures, practicing how to best manage and learn from them may be well worth the effort. Many in the business world, especially in the tech industry, are beginning to embrace failure, and part of this is that the tech industry is driven by innovation. And in order to innovate, one must be willing to think boldly and outside of the box. Often, what holds us back from the new and daring thinking is the fear of failing. Failure-averse attitudes keep us from taking risks, pushing boundaries, or dreaming big. In order to risk failure, we must be willing to examine the habits that encourage us to play it safe and not challenge ourselves. Often, risking failure means risking success. James Quincy, the CEO of the Coca-Cola Company, summed it up well by saying, if we're not making mistakes, we're not trying hard enough. So in addition to rethinking how the fear of failure can block innovative thinking, failures in the tech sector are actually seen as the engine for innovation. It is understood that what we learn from our failures will ultimately drive innovation and will point the way to the next step. The attitude in the tech field has evolved to believe that a failure-averse organization will not be able to reach as far as an organization that supports or even celebrates failure. This should apply to any field in which innovation is an important component, and that certainly includes all STEM fields. So how do we handle our inevitable failures? First, try to take away the stigma, the cultural baggage, and the internal judgment associated with our failures. So when you've tried something and it didn't have the predicted or even the desired outcomes, rather than getting caught up in the negative aspects of the failure, consider what you learned from the process and consider where to go from there. You should also consider how you can make the next attempt more successful, as well as if there are any general lessons about the process itself that you should keep in mind during your next attempt. Finally, has the failure opened up any new opportunities, such as collaborations or the need to learn a new research technique? Regardless of the size or the impact of the lesson that you take from each of our perceived failures, you should never let the opportunity to learn something pass you by. So as we move through the rest of this module, keep in mind that everything we perceive as failures can be opportunities to learn and improve. 